you very much. Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Uh, wow. This has been an amazing conference, hasn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> so many beautiful slides. I'm like, I think my mind has been blown so many times today, I can't even tell you. Um, so, and I'm going to get to show you some really amazing text. Uh, nothing quite as pretty as what we've seen coming up, but hopefully you'll see the beauty in the structure, I hope. Uh, so yeah, uh, who am I? I'm Chris Epstein. I'm one of the, I'm the creator of Compass. I'm a SAS core developer. I'm an engineer at LinkedIn. Uh, they recently hired me to help them make SAS better. So thanks to them for all the great money. Uh, and I'm a husband and a father, and that's my beautiful family there with me. So this is an interactive slide deck, and I know that we haven't been too talkative during presentations, but if I say something and it's totally confusing, please just like throw your hand up in the air, and I'll try to clarify in line, because otherwise we might get lost. Um, and I'm going to talk quite a bit about advanced stuff that's coming in SAS, and it's not... This is not introductory stuff, so if you haven't done SAS before, you might be lost. I'm sorry. Um, so speaking of people who have worked with SAS, can I just, by a show of hands, like if you've used uh, a preprocessor at all, just put your hands up. <laughs> Great. Um, keep your hands up if you don't use SAS, um, but, but you use a preprocessor. Okay. So are you the, you're less than, yeah? All right, I have something for you. <laughs> Read that and get back to me. Um, so that's, our, that's my new book. Uh, me and a couple, th three other guys uh, wrote it together, and uh, it's all about SAS and Compass. Does it say why I shouldn't use this? Uh, it speaks for itself. So what's coming out in SAS 3.3, which we don't have dates that we deliver things on, but I'm thinking in the next month or two. Uh, <clears throat> there's a really awesome feature called source maps, some new amazing string functions. We have a new data structure called a map. Uh, we're getting a bunch of new meta capabilities for SAS script. We're bringing the ampersand from the selector into SAS script. I'll show you what that's all about and we're changing how variable scoping works. So let's get into source maps. Uh, so the, the problem, if you've used a preprocessor, which looks like many of you have now, is when you went in to debug it, you're like, where is it? Like, and SAS had this feature where you could turn on line numbers, and before each selector, you'd be able to like, find the line number of where the selector was. And you could probably trace it back through there. But after a while, that gets a little tedious, too. Uh, and so the Great people at Google have developed this uh, proposed standard, I guess, for source maps that allows you to create a file that's generated by this preprocessor that tells the browser how to get from the generated source or ge that the browser's reading to the real source. And then our great dev tools can show us the real, get us to the real source location instead of uh, keeping us in the generated content. All right, but it's not, it's not so easy to set up, so I'm going to really quickly walk you guys through the steps here that are required. First, you have to install Chrome Canary, which is Google's like, advanced Chrome version. And then you need to go to the special URL, chrome colon slash slash flags pound enable dev tools experiments, and click that little enable thing right there. And then you'll have experiments, and then your browser will restart. Afterwards, in your corner of your browser, you've got to just click this little uh, wheel that'll bring up a window. You're going to go to the Experiments tab and turn on SAS Stylesheet Debugging. Not done yet. We have to install the new version of SAS. So gem install SAS with the dash dash pre option will bring in the latest version instead. And then we're going to compile with a new option called source map. 
And afterwards, you'll get two files per SAS file. One is a CSS file, and one is a map file, which is actually a JSON file. That's the, what's inside. And this was a capability that was contributed to SAS from the Google Chrome team, uh, which was really awesome for them to help us get that up and running quickly. But you're not done yet. <clears throat> so now there's this concept called a workspace. And so you'll have to go to Workspace in the Chrome Dev Tools, click Add Folder, and you're gonna, what you're going to do is you're going to select your project folder, and, and it'll say that the Dev Tools wants to access it, and you'll say Allow. You're still not done. Because <laughs> so what, what Google wants to, what Chrome wants to do is basically associate an output file uh, on disk to the output file that's being served to it from the web browser. And then it'll kind of, from that point, once one file on, on disk has been found that maps to where it is on the browser, then Chrome will be able to be like, aha, I know the structure. Uh, and so you'll, you'll just pick really, go to, you go to sources, go to CSS, and pick basically any CSS file, and then say map to file system resource. And from there, it'll give you three options of things that it thinks are probably the right thing. And you might be tempted to pick the SCSS file, because that's what you want to map it to, but that would be wrong. Instead, you're going to pick the CSS file, because you want to associate the served file to the actual file on disk. Now you're ready. <clears throat> um, so I had a small problem with uh, screen resolution. So I have a big gap here, I'm sorry. Um, but basically what you're going to get now is a source map. And so what the output of a source map looks kind of like this. There's a bunch of gobbledygook under this mappings heading. And this is a small style sheet, so it's pretty small. But this gets pretty crazy pretty fast. Um, sorry, Chris. You said we could interrupt. Interrupt. One quick question for this workflow. Why would it be possible to, be possible to use a uh, eight attribute on the CSS file, which links to points to the SAS file, rather than go through all of this? Um, because we're not looking for just a file level mapping. Uh, sorry, the question was, why don't we just uh, put a comment in the file and say where to go for the file uh, that it came from? And that would be great, but it's not enough information. Uh, it's not enough to know that one selector is here and there, or what files are. We, we actually want to know on a character by character basis where that came from. And I'm going to show you how that all works in a second. Um, and so you get this cool stuff. So let's just like inspect an element here. And you'll see that um, right here in my inspector, this, uh, this slide that I've selected, uh, <coughs> comes from this fade.scss file. And if I click on that, it takes me right into the scss file and highlights the line that it was on, which is pretty awesome. Right there, I can just like see it. But it's actually better than that. So let me show you something slightly different. I'm going to select something in my generated content here. All right, so the background color here is the start green. And let's just say that we want to change the background color to red. So now we can pick our source file. And it takes us over here. We're like, oh, OK, this is our background color. It actually gets better than that. Let me show you this. This is awesome. Um, if I press the Command button in Mac, I don't know what it is in Windows, um, then things start to highlight. And actually, now I can go to this directly to where like, the color is. Um, and so now it takes me to actually this got generated at this color right here, which I can say, oh, that was passed to this mix-in, which was passed this BG color. OK, so this is the, the color. So actually, I want this to be red. And now I'm not going to, I'm going to actually save this locally in Chrome. And I need to run a watcher. So uh, where 
is it? Nope, not that one. Static. Where does it go? Oh, my apologies. Um, I'm going to just skip this part. But basically, when you save, if you're running a watcher, it'll compile it on the fly, and then it'll automatically reload this in your browser. Um, and if I had more than 30 minutes for this talk, I would finish debugging this. But I'm going to move on. Um, and so then what we would see is in real time, while editing in our style sheet, in our browser, styles are updating, just like if you've used live reload, just like that. Um, and it's just a super smooth workflow. And this is, this is the combination of the workspace concept plus the, the source mappings. And it all just connects end to end. And it's a really nice way to develop. So that is source maps. So we added a bunch of new string manipulation functions. Uh, so I just wanted to walk you guys through some of the cool things you can do with strings now. Uh, so for instance, you can check if a string is quoted. Uh, so strings with quotes will return true. You can ask for the length of a string with str length. So th that's uh, 27 characters long. You can look for a substring within a string now using the string index function. So we found that at character 13. And then you can start to compose those so that you can do things like inserting at, a, at, a, at just the location you're looking for. So uh, here, what we're going to do is insert Chris into the middle of, of our string just before the word dolor. So there we go. That comes out there. And you can also do things like pick out the first word, so we're going to slice between the beginning of the string. The slice function is just to extract a substring. And then we'll look for the first space, and that'll be the end index. And we'll have to remove one, because we don't want to actually include that space. And so we get the first word in that string is lorem. We provide uppercase functions and lowercase functions to uh, manipulate the strings in that way as well. So, Standard stuff you'd expect from any programming language. We got to it by 3.3. I think we're doing OK. That was a joke. Uh, the other thing in, in CSS is you have identifiers. Uh, but in SAS, they're, ki they're kind of like a string. So all of the same string functions are going to work on them. Except uh, it won't return quoted true for identifiers. It'll return false. And you can uppercase, lowercase. You can do inserts. So here we're inserting the word new. Um, and so the question might be, why do I need all this stuff? What am I going to do with it? Um, and I think probably not for not your average style sheet, you're going to need these sorts of functions. But if you're building a framework that has conventions or, or and like it wants to append things at the end or in the middle of stuff, or maybe you want to convert from dashed to camel case, then you could write that sort of function. So um, I did. Uh, so here I wrote a capitalized function using these building blocks. And what it does is it takes in a string, and it converts the first character to be uppercase. That's annoying. Uh, so here I'm capitalizing the word something, and it comes out capitalized. The other thing that I wrote using that is this camelize function. So we can take in something that was dashed and produce something that is camel cased. And so if maybe your web framework requires you to use camel case classes, but in writing your CSS, you find dashes to be more aesthetic, then you could do something like this to keep things uh, seamless and aesthetically pleasing. Um, so the the code for this is not trivial, uh, but it's here, and it works just fine. Uh, I'm not going to walk you through it, but I will, uh, I will publish these slides to 
a Heroku or some other place that I can get it running soon. It requires a custom build of SAS and a bunch of other things, so it's kind of complicated, and I didn't get to it yet. But it's, uh, it's all working very nicely, and it shows how you can use these string functions to build more powerful things that can meet your own needs. Um, and if we find that there are really common things that people are building over and over again, we'll try to move those into the core. We're not sure. We want to keep things kind of small until we see the demand. Questions about string functions? Cool. All right, so strings are pretty, pretty boring. I'm kind of used to that. Uh, another feature that you're probably used to in most languages is a map or an associative array. And CSS being about associating things to other things, so rules to selectors or values to properties, it makes sense that we would need to have some sort of association like structure, and so we've decided to add one. And so here we can see a basic map. The syntax is basically you have to have parentheses, and then it's comma-separated pairs that are separated by a colon. The key can be anything. It doesn't have to be a string here. Like, you could use two picks. It can be your value, um, or it can be a color, etc. From there, uh, you can now have a map, and you can use that map to store information. You can pass that around. And so here's an example of me building like a theme defining some basic structures of that theme. And then if I want to inherit from that theme and make a new better theme, I can use the map merge function to add more properties to the base theme. And then I can basically access the data from inside the map and go through it. So here I'm able to read out the keys. So you can see they come out comma separated. I can get out the values. I can use the map get function to just retrieve a single key from there, the, the value associated with a, with a certain key. If it's not there, you just get the word, you just get null. Um, have you guys seen? I, don't know, don't know, I think a lot of people don't know about null. If you don't have null, if you don't have it, you get null, and then SAS, when it gets when a property gets assigned a null value, just drops that declaration, which is actually pretty cool. Um, so that's why this background color is just disappearing. Values that contain lists? Sure. Um, the, because you're worried about the comma confusing it. Um, so what you do is just wrap that in parentheses, and, and it'll be fine. So the question was basically, if, it, if, the, if the value was font comic sans, you know, Zepfino, uh, now it's kind of confused. So what you would do is just throw in some extra parentheses to deconfuse SAS. All right. Um, these maps also work with iteration. So if you wanted to just see everything that's there, you could do at each uh, key comma value in theme. Uh, and then we would see Nothing. Oh, I know why. There we go. Uh, so here you can see, if you just wanted to like print out everything, and, and so you could write a mix-in that basically now converts your map into a rule set. Uh, so there's some really interesting things that you can do now. Again, this is a feature I think that the frameworks are going to find more useful, but we get a lot of people asking us questions about like, they want to take a variable and then interpolate it. So they'll, they'll, they'll say, like, can I just do, like, theme? So they have their theme name somewhere. And then, then they have something like, and they'll, they'll want to do this. To get, to get the value, like, 
and create an association that way. And we just felt this was ugly and unreadable and a little confusing. And so maps are basically our answer to the request for uh, variable interpolation. Uh, I'm going to skip that example for right now. Any more questions about maps? All right, moving on. Can you, can you test um, the keys or values of our stack? Yes. So here, uh, the map has key function uh, returns false because nope doesn't exist, but base color does. So now it returns true, uh, and that's pretty useful too. I think I used that actually in a later example. Is there any limits to how many map merges you can do? How deep you can go? Is there limits to how deep the map merging can go? So basically, every time you merge a map, you get a new map. Uh, so in, in SAS, every data type is, every piece of data is immutable, so we always just make a copy and give you a copy back. Um, so there's no limit to how many merges, but if you did a lot, you're going to probably make a lot of garbage along the way. So some performance aspect to think about. You can embed maps within other maps as well, like nested as a value, um, and you just would just put more parentheses and just repeat the next map there. All right. Uh, so metascripting, again, another feature that the framework de developers have been asking for over and over again. Probably you're not going to need them in your style sheets. Uh, but the goal is if we give great tools to the framework makers, the framework makers give you amazing tools that make your life uh, uh, even better. So here is the, the call function. So if there's a function defined, either you've defined it or SAS has defined it or even CSS has defined it, you can pass that function name to call, and it will get invoked. Um, and so by this, we can now say, hey, like, what is the function, like, user of my framework, what is the function that you need that's going to tell me how to compute colors, say, for, for theming? And you give it that, that the, the user space code can pass the framework the, the name of the function, and it can call it for you whenever it needs to know that information. So we can do a lot of inversion of control now. Um, and that's super handy. Uh, so here's an example that I made that's kind of doing that. Um, so basically, this, uh, this theme is hoping for a, for a function that tells it how to compute colors. And we're able to pass in the background function is called my theme background. And I've defined it uh, right here, and all it does is, is just lighten the color a little bit. And then the theme, when it's doing all of its hard work to set things up, ends up calling that function for us, and then we get a lighter color of red. Uh, so basically, it took the base color here and lightened it for us. If that had been blue, we'd get a different output. Uh, so should be some neat stuff that comes our way from, from this. Uh, the other meta stuff that we were added is the ability to check existence of various things within your style sheet. Uh, so for instance, we can now check if a function exists. So ask if uh, some function named in biggin exists. Uh, so that'll return true here. Uh, lighten is built in by SAS. That's going to return true. We can ask if a mixin exists. And because it was defined here, We'll get true from there. We can check about global variables. Um, and if you've defined a local, then you, then you can just check if the normal variable exists. So there's a bunch of, of stuff that uh, will allow inspection of kind of the context and avoid making mistakes. And where this gets really handy is in upgrading frameworks from version to version. So somebody adds a new sweet uh, feature 
but they want to support an older version of the same library. And so now what they can do is kind of figure out what's going on by saying, does that, does that mix-in even exist? And if not, I'm going to do something different here. Question. Right, so these will just return true or false, but then you can combine these with an if statement. Uh, if you want to like, do something on the other side. So there's, if you guys don't know, there's two kinds of if statements in SAS. There's a block level if that's at if. There's also an inline level if, which, maybe that's on the next page. Uh, I'll just show it to you real quick. So it used to be in SAS that if you wrote an if, an if function, you would get an error if one of the conditions was, was basically invalid. Uh, but oftentimes, you wanted to branch on the condition because it would have been invalid if you just, but don't evaluate that. Uh, and that was the case for the block level if statement. But for the function level if statement, that wasn't true. So we fixed that. Uh, so we can do this like. So if true, and then the true value will be green, and the false value will be 10 divided by 0. Um, so we get green, but if we change this to false, oh, Sass, you're so smart. What's something else that's invalid? Uh, let's do divided by nothing that exists. All right, so that this, this variable doesn't exist. But if we change this to true, we get something that works because we didn't even evaluate the branch condition. It's what you'd expect from an if statement. We're getting there. All right, so that's metascripting. Now the feature that I have been dying for for so long. Um, and this is one that you guys are going to really find a lot of value in, I think. And it's the ability to move the parent selector into SAS script. Uh, so basically, the idea is you, like you've been able to use ampersand inside selectors. You know, that works fine. Or you could do whatever. Um, or if it's a class, et cetera. And, and so that works great, but the second you need to m kind of do some manipulation or you want to do something fancy, all of a sudden you start to see the limitations of this as being a, a, a proper selector uh, abstraction and not something you can fiddle with. Uh, and in particular, the way people really wanted to do this was by uh, doing names, doing like modules, like BEM style or SMAC style or OOCSS style modules. And so this is an example of how you will define a module here. So this is just my module. What this really appears to be in SAS is actually an element name, but there's no such element. Um, and so this gets passed in, and we're using interpolation to generate a selector. And, and so the output comes out very nicely with the kind of more OOCSS friendly style class names uh, that are namespaced instead of adding more specificity through uh, context. Where's Nicole? She missed it. So, so that's obviously really huge, but um, and so like, people wanted the ability to basically just to do this. Uh, but we had a really specific reason to do that, which is it, w it allows you to make invalid selectors. And we really wanted to have a foolproof way of using the ampersand. Um, and interpolation is basically you saying, hey, SAS, don't worry, I got this. I know what I'm doing. Um, from here, we can go and do more crazy things. And, and we love to find a solution to a, a fairly simple problem that then pays off in these other ways to do things that are even more crazy and mind-blowing. Uh, so I made a little mix-in called 
inject parent. And so what this mixin is going to do is it's going to, because ampersand only works, you can like add something to the start of your selector, you can add something to the end, but you're kind of, that's what you got. So now we want to be able to say, go up one selector component and insert something right there. Uh, and so now we can do that. So inject parent is a mixin that uses the content directive to place its content and basically allows us to go in using list manipulation functions and things like this. Um, so the selector gets returned to you as a comma delimited list of space separated of lists. And the components in the space separated list are strings that are unquoted that are basically your class names or if, they're, if you have like uh, other selector combinators, they'll be, they'll be there too as their own component. And so we're going to put that all together down here. So this was kind of like the old way and you, you were frustrated and you couldn't really make it work. And in the new way, what we're adding here is we're going to inject the parent for the main, the main element. Uh, into the selector that's in our current context. And so the output we get is basically this main gets injected just into the middle of the selector. Yay! Um, and then, you know, starting to see how the mix-in content from SAS 3.2 combined with now new selector manipulation is starting to pay some really awesome dividends in terms of what we can do here. Um, so here's another interesting thing for people who love specificity. A person wrote into the SAS uh, issue tracker. They're like, I really want to do this thing where I want to double up my class name to add just a little bit of specificity. I don't want to add important. That's too much. I just want to dink it up a tad. I'm like, okay. Um, we can do that now. And so this is a really crazy function I wrote uh, that can find the last class in a selector. So this is a function that goes through your selector, finds the last class. Um, this is a function I think I'm going to add to SAS because I have to keep defining it in all these examples. Um, it just cuts the list up into pieces. Uh, and then we're going to define a mixin that, does, that increases the specificity. So basically, this is going to go. It's going to find the last class. It's going to say when it finds it, I'm going to double it up and then keep going. So let me show you how this would work. Uh, so here we have this selector, increase me, please. And in the output, we get please, please. Um, but if the last component is not a class, it wouldn't be OK to du duplicate the, the element itself, because ah, it's not an element. Uh, and so instead, what we do is we, we still are finding the last class there and, and bumping that up. So some really cool things we can do now with selectors. Go crazy. What is what? No, I don't know who does this, but you can. That's the point. <laughs> um, let's find some really cool things that, are, that make sense and, and do that more than this, maybe. So I didn't really talk about it, but you might have been seeing this thing called at root uh, floating around. So let me just real quickly describe kind of why we have to do that. Um, basically, once the ampersand goes into SAS script, we don't know. Like, what are you going to do with that? We, we kind of knew not to repeat the context when you put it in your selector, but now it's in script. It could have gotten passed to a mixin. Maybe it got ignored. Maybe it didn't. And so we couldn't find a good heuristic. So we decided that you're going to have to tell us when you want your context to be doubled up. Uh, so if you don't have an at root, let me just show you what would happen. Uh, let's keep these. Um, you get the context over again. Uh, so at root basically says, take the selector and place it at the root of the document and ignore my context, but keep my context available in terms of the, 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 the parent reference and 
So now I'm basically controlling my context. And you can use this to completely bounce out of your current context. You don't have to use the selector parent anymore. You can just decide you're deeply nested in something and it makes sense for you to like pop up to the main level now, make a new selector at the top level, go back down. So there's some interesting things that happen here. Uh, and we, we think that at root will have value beyond just there. And one way that it's going to pay dividends, though this isn't implemented just yet, is you're going to be able to unscope yourself from a media block. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have ever tried to do an extend within an at media block and gotten this little message telling you that you were making a, a sin and you've made the SAS gods angry. Did I just call myself a god? Oops. Um, uh, yeah, so you can't do that. It doesn't make sense. We don't know how to apply extend across your entire document for a runtime value. So we've, we've been slapping people's hands. But it, it, if it makes sense, you can now basically pop out of your media context, do your extend, and then you'll be right back into your media context. And so the, the syntax for that is going to be basically at root, like, without media. And then anything that's inside there will not get its media. This will also work, if you say all, it'll, like, bounce you out of all, like, runtime directives, so document, supports, things like that. Um, so that's going to work soon. Almost ready. Uh, so we're changing variable scoping. I'm going to say something here. Can we keep it between us? So this is something Les got right. <clears throat> they scoped variables to their block. And if you defined a variable that was defined elsewhere, it didn't change the value outside that block. And we decided that you wanted to change the global value. And I think that was bad. So starting in 3.3, the, uh, we're deprecating the ability to assign to a global value from within a local scope. Unless you provide this bang global modifier at the end of your assignment. Then the deprecation warnings will go away. In the next release, we will change this behavior uh, in entirety. And that is what I have for you guys today. I I'd like to make a quick note, two things. Um, doing this makes it, takes a whole community. Like Nathan Weisenbaum that works with me on, on the core team is brilliant, and he doesn't get enough credit. So if you guys can shoot a message to him at Next3 on Twitter and just tell him he's awesome, it would probably cheer him up. Uh, at LinkedIn, we're hiring SaaS developers. Would love it if, uh, if you guys are looking for a job. And Compass is, uh, is actually charity wear which means that if you use it and love it, uh, we ask that you make a donation to the umdf.org, which is uh, trying to find a cure for the disease that's killing my dad. So I'd appreciate that. <laughs>